Wouldn't you say those were great spiritual powers? After the demon said the person had a tail and told someone to step on it, the person could not get up. The person has no choice but to believe. He says, I'm an animal and now I really do have a tail. Otherwise, how could he step on it and prevent me from standing up? Or at that, all in the assembly pour out their hearts in respect and admiration for him. It's magic, they say. He knows the person is going to be an animal even before the person has died. He must be a Buddha or a living Bodhisattva. Actually, they've been dubbed by a ghost and don't even realize it. They see a ghost or a demon king and mistake it for a Bodhisattva. Living beings are really upside down. If someone has a doubt, the demon detects it immediately. Someone in the assembly may be skeptical and think, how can that be? It isn't reasonable. As soon as he starts to doubt, the demon knows it and says, So you don't believe me? These people take one look. Oh, he's really a bodhisattva. I didn't say that was what was on my mind. And he knew about it. He exposed my doubt. That's incredible. After that, he doesn't dare to disbelieve. He establishes intense ascetic practices that exceed the Buddha's moral precepts. He says, the Buddha's Vinaya is not enough. I am establishing a new Vinaya for you. I want you to be new Buddhas and I am creating a new Buddhism. The previous one is obsolete and inapplicable. This is the scientific era, the nuclear age and everything must be modernized and improved. The old way of thinking is no longer useful. The old Buddhism cannot be applied either. That is how he changes Buddhism. He says that people can be elders or bishops or anything they want. January 1983 There are old-fashioned religions and trendy religions. No one believes in religions they consider old-fashioned, but everyone traces madly after trendy things of all the Dharma spoken by the Buddha, the most important part is precepts. Nowadays, people consider the Buddha really old-fashioned and they want to find something more up-to-date. Their search takes them fight into the demon king's liar. None of the external sects are free from greed and desire. They are inseparable and they desire to benefit themselves at the expense of others. I cannot say that we at the city of 10,000 Buddhas are definitely in accord with the proper Dharma. Nevertheless, I ask each of you who has followed me so many years, have I ever asked you to hand your wealth and property over to the temple? Why have I never done this? Because I'm very old-fashioned. I want to uphold and honor the precepts. The precepts tell us to give to others, not to demand that others give to us why we don't give anything to them. At the city of 10,000 Buddhas, our revenue comes very naturally. We don't scheme for contributions. We receive enough income as it is. If we were to try to treat people of their money, how would we be any different from demons? People who tell others to donate their personal and family wealth and their own lives and fa their families' lives to the way place are totally misguided. I'm not like them. I do not want anyone's wealth, nor do I desire any beautiful women. I want neither fame nor a good rep reputation. In fact, I have quite a notorious reputation, not a good one. The very mention of my name gives some people a headache, especially those goblins, demons, ghosts, and freaks. 
He slanders Bishu's saying, Bishu, what's a Bishu? He makes fun of the name. He says, you say he's a Bishu? He's a badge. I say he's a badge. He also scolds his assembly of disciples. He scolds his disciples however he pleases. He may tell them, you're a dog, or you're a cat, or you're a rat, or you're a pig. The disciples hear his coding, his coding and said whatever he says, thinking he's a bodhisattva. You say I'm a pig, so I'm a pig. You say I'm a dog, so I'm a dog. You say I'm a cat, so I'm a cat. They don't dare talk back. This demon king has such a tremendous power that he manages to delude people into believing everything he says. And he exposes people's private affairs. For instance, a man and woman may have done something indecent and he will say to the woman, you did such and such with a certain man in a certain place. The woman thinks to herself, how did he know? Or he may expose them in public, saying, these two are despicable. They did something improper, something unspeakable in such and such a place. Ask her about it, she wouldn't dare deny it. It turns out that they have in fact done it and they don't dare to deny it. He does this to show people that he has spiritual powers and that he knows everything that is going on. He exposes their private matters without fear of ridicule or rejection. He divulges people's secrets and is not afraid that they will scorn him. He is always fond of foretelling calamities and auspicious events. He likes to say things such as, you'd better be careful, tomorrow is going to be an unlucky day for you. Someone might try to poison you, so watch what you eat or you may die of poisoning. He foretells both the unlucky and lucky events and when they come to pass, he's not wrong in the slightest. When the events happen, they turn out to be exactly as he predicted. So how could people not believe in him? Such demon kings are far more efficacious than bodhisattvas. Sutra, this is a ghost with great powers that in his old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person. But when it ties up doing so, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless house. Commentary This is a ghost with great powers that in its old age has become a demon. Ghosts become demons when they get old, just as people who don't practice virtuous deeds become rascals in their old age. As I have told you, the, a Chinese, the Chinese have a saying, to be old and not to have died is to be a rascal. When people are old and experienced, they can make trouble. In the same way, old ghosts become demons. It disturbs and confuses the good person. Jealous of the cultivation of other people, the ghost destroys their samadhi power. But when it eventually ties up doing so, it will leave the other person's body and no longer possess him. Then both the disciples and the teacher will get in trouble with the law. That's equivalent to their falling into the house. There's a saying, someone deluded transmits his delusion. So after the transmit, uh, transmission, neither one understands, the teacher falls into their house and the disciple burrows in after him. The same principle applies here. Because he hasn't met a teacher who truly understands, the disciple is also muddled. When he sees his teacher going to the house, he follows his teacher there. The teacher turns around and says, What did you come here for? The disciple replies, 
I saw you coming here, so of course I came along. The teacher says, "Oh no, this isn't a good place. You shouldn't have come, but you came first. You could. How could I not have followed you? I studied with you after all. I should go wherever you go," says the disciple. The teacher thinks, "Ah, I've landed in the house myself and brought my disciple with a with me as well. I've really done wrong by you. I'm very sorry. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of stress migration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall fall into the relentless house." Sutra further in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any devin mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within some of these mind craves more knowledge and understanding, so he diligently toils at examining and. Propping as he greedily seeks to know past lives. Commentary further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect bright concentration. Within samadhi, his mind craves more knowledge and understanding. While in samadhi, he wants to know more things and to have the knowledge of past lives. He works with intense vigor and does not fear suffering. So he diligently toils at examining and probing as he greedily seeks to know past lives. Sutra. At that time, a demon from the heaven senses the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and the drama. This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks knowledge, he arranges a seat and speaks the drama. Commentary. At that time, a demon from the heavens senses the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and the drama. This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, not realizing that he is being taken over by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks knowledge, he arranges a seat and speaks the drama. Sutra there in the drama assembly, inexplicably that person may obtain an enormous precious pearl. The demon may sometimes change into an animal that holds the pearl, or other jewels, bamboos, tablets, tongues, talismans, letters, and other unusual things. In his mouth, the demon first gives the objects to the person and afterwards possesses him, or he may fool his audience by burying the objects underground and then saying that a moonlight pearl is illuminating the place. Thereupon, the audience feels they have obtained something unique. He may eat only medicinal herbs and not take on and not partake of. Prepared food, or he may eat only one tea, same seed, and one grain of wheat a day, and still look robust. That is because he is sustained by the power of the demon. He slanders pictures and scolds his assembly of disciples without fear of ridicule or rejection. Commentary there in the drama assembly, inexplicably. Inexplicably, for no reason whatsoever, in the place where drama is being spoken, that person may obtain an enormous precious pearl. It may be a diamond or something like a wish-fulfilling pearl. The demon may sometimes change into an animal, 
The person who is speaking the Dharma changes into an animal himself, explaining the Bodhisattvas can transform into anything. The animal that he changes into holds the pearls or other jewels, bamboo tablets or tonglis. Tonglis were used for official purposes in ancient times. Words were written on a piece of bamboo which was then split, split so that part of the words appeared on each piece. When it was time to use the tonglis, they would be put together. If the tonglis matched, it would be a certified match. If the two parts did not match, then would mean it was inauthentic. Talismans are used to subdue and catch demons, ghosts, goblins, and weird creatures. And the animal might carry letters and other unusual things in its mouth. All of these are strange, rare, and valuable objects. The demon first gives the objects to the person and afterwards possesses him. Or he may fool his audience by burying the objects underground and then saying that a moonlight power is illuminating the place. He buries, buries the pearl in the ground and then tricks his listeners, telling them, there's a pearl which resembles the bright moon emitting light there. Thereupon, the audience feels they have obtained something unique. Wow, this has to be for real. This can't be a demon, they say. He is clearly a demon, yet they insist that he isn't. Alas, for those who listen to his drama. He may eat only medicinal herbs and not partake of prepared food. The demon often eats only herbs, not regular food. He doesn't eat good food. He may eat ginseng or other tonics and nourishing supplements. When I was in Hong Kong, I met a person who said he didn't eat ordinary food. He acted as a medium for people who sought long life, sun's blessings, or other things. Whenever he stayed in people's homes, he would announce he didn't eat ordinary food. What did he eat then? Walnuts. Walnuts are very nourishing, full of oil. If you eat them, your brain will be very good. You only have to eat a little to be full. If you usually eat one bowl of rice, you only have to eat half a bowl of walnuts to be full. He also ate pine nuts. At any rate, he ate the most nutritious items. Or he may eat only one sesame seed or one grain of wheat a day and still look robust. Even so, he stays really fat, fatter than a pig. That is because he is sustained by the power of the demon. He standard specials and scolds his assembly of disciples without fear of ridicule or rejection. He does, not, he does nothing but slander those who have left the home life. Left home, left home pupil, what home did they leave? They don't cultivate at all. Left home pupil aren't greedy for money. The more the better is their attitude. Or he says, why do people believe in him? He's just a person after all. You're really an idiot. When people have faith in the bishops, he calls them idiots. He scolds his own disciples calling them animals and all sorts of things, he is totally unafraid of any rebuttals. May 1989 Disciple When he comes to see that good person who seeks knowledge, he arranges a seat and speaks the drama. Vulnerable Master, this means the demon. He goes to see the person who seeks knowledge of past lives. Disciple, there in the Dharma assembly, inexplicably, that person may obtain an enormous precious pearl. The demon may sometimes change into an animal. Is this another demon? Venerable Master, no, it's the same one. Disciple, does the person possessed by the demon transform into an animal? 
Venerable Master, yes, to everyone he appears to be an animal. He takes on a bizarre appearance. First, the demon gives them to the person and afterwards possesses him. The person is the one who seeks knowledge of past lives. Disciple, the person who seeks knowledge of past lives is already possessed by a demon and has changed into an animal and his also holding the pole of and other gems in his mouth. Venerable Master, he gives them to the people who are listening to the drama. It isn't just one person. Perhaps he selects one among them. This is all hypothetical. It doesn't necessarily have to happen that way. Don't think that it has to be that way just because the Buddha said it. This is an example and you should be able to understand their situation, understand other situations by inter inference. Don't be so rigid, be flexible in your understanding so that the next time such a situation occurs, you'll know. Oh, this is the same as that example. Here he turns into an animal, but in another case, he might turn into a Buddha. Disciple, what about when it afterwards possesses him? Whom does the demon possess? Venerable Master, the demon possesses everyone. Disciple, are there other demons that come to possess everyone? Venerable Master, no, the same, per the same demon can have innumerable transformation bodies. It can possess that person as well as other people. Disciple. So it jumps around from one to the other. Venerable Master, it doesn't jump. It isn't just one. It can transform into many. Disciple. Oh, so it can possess you and it can also possess someone else. I never knew demons were so powerful. Venerable Master. Demons are about as powerful as Buddhas. It's just that the one is deviant and the other is proper. What demons do is deviant and what Buddhas do is proper. That's the difference. There's a person from Taiwan who has had such experiences. We can ask him to speak now. To so the layman, tell everyone Everyone, the whole story about how the demon transmitted the mind drama to you. Layman, Venerable Master, Drama Masters, and Good Advisors, I will talk about my experiences in non-Buddhist religions, what I saw and understood. Perhaps my experiences are not quite the same as the states caused by the demons from the heavens described by the Buddha. These demons can transform in endless ways, and what I saw is only one of their states. As a sham experience, keep in mind that it is not the whole picture. The demons from the heavens manifest in many ways. They may or may not go through a medium. If you practice with an improper mind, improper mind in an external sect, the demon can appear to you in the form of a person when you are meditating. It doesn't need a medium. This sutra text says, there in the Dharma assembly, inexplicably, that person may obtain an enormous precious pearl because it says, there in the Dharma assembly, I think that there are three parties, the medium, the speaker of Dharma, and the listeners. The Venerable Master interprets the person as referring to the possessed person. That is one interpretation. However, from what I understand and from the other explanations that I've read, I think the person refers to someone who hasn't been possessed yet. Why? Because the Buddha spoke the Suragama Sutra in order to warn those who are not yet possessed, but those who but whose minds have already gone astray. If they are not alert, they will be possessed by demons. 
the Buddha wants to warn them. When the skandhas of form, feeling, and thinking come to an end, you should be especially cautious, for you may experience many of these days, and you need to know how to deal with them. Two years ago, I went to the hall of a lay man who shaved his head like a monk. He said that while meditating, a demon from the heavens possessed him and said, "Let me give you a worthless book from heaven, or such and such a sutra." People went there because they were looking for a quick way to get enlightened, a that way place. They used all kinds of methods, and I either saw or heard them talk about every one of the first thirty skanda demon states. For example, I saw the tallest gems and treasure troves. I also witnessed them eating meals of one sesame seed and one grain of wheat, or eating gluttonously. For example, in the case of obtaining an enormous pearl, when you are meditating, someone will say, "May I give you this pearl? If your mind is moved and you wish to have it, then through the medium you stretch your hands out to take it. Once you accept it, you are in for trouble." I talk about my personal experience. When I went to a certain place two years ago, the layman told me. I can give you a worthless book from heaven. If you practice according to it for three years, you can obtain great spiritual powers. That day, my mind was rather swayed, and I thought, "If you want to give me a worthless book from heaven, fine," he said. To accept it, raise both hands, and I'll give it to you. After I received it, I went home. And the next day, I kept reciting things that I did not understand. It sounded like Japanese, and then Thai, and then I was singing army songs dating from the Japanese Meiji reign songs which I had never sung before. Although my voice is usually pretty bad, when I was singing those army songs, I could sing very high and very low. And it sounded better than the singers on television. I think the worthless book from heaven is something like the tongues mentioned in the sutra. There are two possibilities in the place where the drama is spoken. The first is that you have not been possessed by the demon, and you cannot see what is happening. If you have not entered the form skanda, then you cannot see either. In the other case, when you are meditating, the possessed person can see, and so can you. In one case, you and the possessed person are both in samadhi, and you can see whatever he gives you. You can also see the external state, but it's just an illusion that he conjures up. In the the other case, you cannot see, but your mind moves. The person says, "Can I give you this thing?" If you say yes, then things change. However, if you say I don't want it, then the demon from the heaven cannot possess you because it has to follow its own rules too. As far as I know, all the external sects in Taiwan fall under the first thirty skanda demon states. Before the thinking and consciousness can doesn't have been ended, our present interpretation may differ somewhat from the real incidents I just spoke of. In such situations, the demons from the heavens may appear in these ways to harm you and prevent you from attaining the way, since everyone is at a different level. A different level of cultivation. They appear in different ways each time. I just wanted to offer this for everyone to consider.